So hello everybody, welcome. We are about to start the review for your basic geometry benchmark exam. So the first step to number one on this problem is to rewrite the equation so that you can actually work on it. Then you're going to come in here and I would recommend to add 5m to both sides because the first step that we want to make is to get all the variables on one side. So here we eliminate them on one side as soon as possible and we move it over here and this way they're all positive and we don't have to deal with any sign changes. So we have 6m plus 1 equals 7. And then I know we'll have to take away 1 from both sides, right? So therefore, 6m equals 6. And if I divide both sides by 6, right? Divide this by 6, all right, 6 over 6 equals 1, and 6 over m, the 6's will cancel. So we get m equals 1. Okay, so then we would go to D and pick that problem. All right, just like that. So the next problem looks a little longer, but it's not so different. So here we go. All right, um, let's rewrite the equation. So we're going to write negative 5 plus 3n equals n. Let's just add these numbers right now and save us a step. 4 plus 7 makes 11. So now um, we're going to get the variable on one side as soon as possible. It's the most efficient thing to do. So now we get negative 5 plus 2n equals 11. And then we want to add 5 to both sides. So plus 5 here, plus 5 on this side. And then you get 2n equals 16. And if we divide both sides by 2, I'll just go ahead and skip a step, okay? We know 16 divided by 2 is 8. So you should choose 8 for this problem, okay? So now we're going to have to do number 3. And measuring this is going to be done with a ruler. And be careful which side you want to use. Notice that it says round your measurements to the nearest millimeter and to measure each segment in centimeters. All right, this is to measure each segment in centimeters. So here we go. Take the centimeter side of your ruler and line it up exactly where it needs to be. And I see that this looks to be about from where I'm standing. All right, so don't forget to line up this line with the, with the line you're measuring. You don't want to line up the end of the ruler. Line up this line, okay? And it looks like about 3.2 to me. The resolution looks a little, a little weird in the video, okay? But hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So just measure your line segment, and you should be able to do this problem, okay? If you need to Google how to use a ruler, um, go ahead. So we need to classify this angle as acute, obtuse, right, or straight. And this is acute angle, okay? Acute angles are less than 90. So acute angles are less than 90 degrees. So if we come and look over at this one, we see a different kind of angle. This angle definitely isn't less than 90 degrees, okay? We can see a right angle inside of that. So it's bigger than a 90 degree angle. Well. This means it's obtuse, and obtuse, oh, sorry, missing, okay, obtuse angles, oh, sorry about that, let me just move the camera over a little bit, obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees. So we have to be able to tell by looking at an angle, does it look, maybe it's going to be tough when it's 89 degrees or 91 degrees. It's not exactly able to see whether or not it's greater than 90. So if you get a problem on this test, it, it will be obvious that it's obtuse. It's not going to be uh, something very close to 90. All right? You should be able to eyeball it. So name each angles in four ways. And if you notice what it says right here, it says choose the wrong name for this angle. Okay, that's going to be what you guys pick is the wrong name. So if you guys know four ways to name it, 
you should be able to figure out which one of these is not the correct way to name the angle. And what we studied in class was that the vertex of the angle, this point right here, the vertex is T. And the vertex has to be in the middle when you name an angle. To name an angle, okay? So that's pretty much the only information we need to know. The vertex has to be in the middle, or we can use uh, angle four that labels this angle as angle number four. So this would be a good name. Angle T could also work, and we could use UTS because the vertex is in the middle. But we see this angle right here, its vertex is T, and T is not in the middle here. Therefore, this is a wrong name for the angle, okay? A wrong name, not the right name. And if we look at number eight, we can see that it says a five in there. I don't know if you can see that, a five. And we see E at the vertex, okay? So the vertex is E. So this could be an answer. This could be a right name, all right? And D couldn't be a right name. And E, look, E is in the middle. So these three are correct ways to name this angle. And angle D, well, D is over here. D is not the vertex, so D cannot be a name. Therefore, it's the wrong name, okay? So we're doing pretty good so far. So I would like you guys to practice on these problems. And the only way you can mess up is really forgetting what you have to find. So don't forget, we have to find ZGF, okay? So we're going to find this angle right here. That's what we're looking for. And they tell you that HGZ is 78 degrees. So I would write a 78 in there. And now they tell you HGF, this whole angle from H to G to F, okay? So this whole angle is how many degrees? It says 178, so I'm going to write 178, okay? So we know this whole thing's add up to 178 degrees, okay? So what angle from this list would go here that would add up to make this whole angle 178? Clearly, we should pick 100, okay? 100 plus 78 equals 178. That's one way to do the problem. Maybe sometimes you're going to be able to eyeball it and pick it really quick. I had a feeling you guys did this like this, okay? But if the numbers aren't so nice and neat, just like 178 makes 178, you have to do a little more thinking. So in this case, they gave us what we have to find at the beginning. So put that in a box. You have to find IJT. And IJT is this little angle right here. And so again, they tell us that TJK, which is this angle, over here, okay, this angle right here is 150, so we'll write a 150 in there, okay, labeling your diagram is one of the most useful things, and then now we're going to say that IJK equals 174, and IJK starts at I, goes to J, and then over to K, so that's this entire angle has to be 174, okay, so we could label this angle right here with the X, and by the angle addition postulate, we know that 150 plus x equals 174. And so if I take away 150 from both sides, I could do algebra to find out that this has to be 24 degrees. So I would pick C. So I hope you guys use the angle addition possible. Okay, you have to look at the, the question that you get and find out, did they tell you, if they tell you to get a little angle, all right, an angle that's not the whole one, an angle that's a piece of the whole angle, then you're going to have to do some subtraction, like here where we subtracted 150, okay? Now, if they ask you to find the whole angle, in that case, they'll give you the two smaller angles, and you'll have to add them up. So make sure that you don't just add the numbers or don't just subtract them. You have to think about the way that they've been given to you. Well, that's one page down. So now we get to number 19, okay? Number 19 isn't so bad, okay? What you have to do is notice these arrows here, okay? Those tell us that the lines are parallel, okay? They have the same number of arrows. Just the same way that these lines over here have two arrows on them, and they're parallel, okay? Notice these two arrows. Those pair of arrows right there tell us these lines are parallel. And we learned a lot of things about parallel lines. The first thing we learned about parallel lines was that corresponding angles have to be equal. So these angles have to be equal. And this is the corresponding angle postulate, okay? If these angles weren't equal, basically this line right here would be tilted up one way or tilted the other way. 
and basically they wouldn't be parallel. So if these angles aren't equal, the lines aren't parallel. So it should be pretty obvious since you marked the corresponding angles, okay? Corresponding angles means that down here, this angle is on the top right. So if I come up here to this place, this angle is still on the top right. Oh, I broke my pencil. And that makes them corresponding, okay? They're in the same relative position, okay? Not the same position, but the same relative position. Down here, this is on the top right, and up here, this is on the top right. That's what we mean by relative position, okay? So, yeah, we made a long story, or we made a short story kind of long right there. So, basically, the answer is 129, okay? Copy the number, but make sure you know why you're copying it. Those are corresponding angles, okay? Go ahead and write that. Corresponding angles... All right, are equal. And technically, we're talking about corresponding angles that are on parallel lines with the transversal are equal, but let's not write that whole sentence. That's a lot to write. So on this one, we would like to put an X here in this case. And by that last theorem, we saw that this angle has to be equal to this one. So even if you forget about same side interior angles, well, we know if this is X, then this is X, right? And since these two angles are on a straight line, I know these two have to add up to 180. So we can make the statement that x plus 58, sorry about that, equals 180. And so if I subtract 58 from here and 58 from here, we see that we need to have 102 makes 60, so 122. And there you go. Okay, 122 is our answer for there. And these are called same side, because they're on the same side of this line, right? They're both over here. And they're interior angles, because they're in between our parallel lines. Okay? Same side interior angles uh, are supplementary. And I'm running out of, line, line of space, so, uh, well, whatever. This is right in there. And what's supplementary mean? All right. Supplementary means to add up to 180. So sorry I'm getting all messy and everything, but, you know, kind of improvising here, trying to get this uploaded before 8.30 today. So there's going to be some problems that check your algebra, your algebraic reasoning, and can you form your own equation when you have more than just numbers. So we just learned in the last problem, this one up here, corresponding angles are equal when you have parallel lines with the transversal. So we have the same case down here. We have two parallel lines with the transversal, and this angle down here is on the bottom right, and this angle is on the bottom right. So that means they're corresponding, and therefore they're equal. So I can say that 9 plus 11x equals 130. And if I subtract 9 from both sides, we'll get 11x equals 121, and then divide both sides by 11, and you might even remember from your head that 11 times 11 is 121. So x has to be 11. And that is an answer that we can choose. So this is the way you use corresponding angles, again, to make uh, an equation. And this problem over here, again, we have the case where they are same side, OK? And these angles don't even look equal, OK? I want you to focus on that. Don't forget to use your eyes. This angle is an acute angle. And this angle up here is obtuse. So there's no way they're going to be equal. This one's less than 90. This one's greater than 90. So please think to yourself before you just make a random equation. I know we're practicing making equations, but we have to make the right one. So like I learned in this problem up here, we learned that they have to both add up to 180 if they're on the same side. Okay? So these two angles are same side. They add up to 180. Hey, look. The next problem that we're doing, these two are same side. They add up to 180. So let's go over here. And let's write our equation out. We're going to write 5 plus 31x plus 12x plus 3 equals 180, okay? Sorry about the resolution of this, all right? I got a better camera coming any day now, so we won't have to put up with this much longer. So I'll put the x's in front, okay? We got 5 plus 3 is 8. Let's just do the numbers in front. And then 31x plus 12x makes uh, 24x. And this equals 180, okay? So now, if I subtract 8 from both sides, we get 24 equals 172, all right? Because that's minus 8 here, disappears, and we got minus 8 over here. And now 24x equals 172. Don't forget your variable. 
So now we have to divide both sides by 24. All right? And which one of these do we multiply times 24 to get 172, okay? 4 times 174, uh, time, 4 times 24 is not 172. Negative 6 isn't going to be it. What about 5? What's 5 times 24? That's 100 plus 20. Still not 172, okay? So the answer has to be 9. But let's do it in our head, all right? 9 times 24 is 180 plus 36. So does that work either? Okay, great. Uh, technical difficulty.